Welcome to another mod guide for Vault Hunters 118. Today is refined storage. Even if you're not playing in the Vault Hunters mod pack, this will still be helpful to you, but some recipes and a little bit of functionality will be different. Here is the most basic setup of a refined storage system. Yes, this right here can hold 1,000 to hundreds of thousands of items, and it's pretty much all you need consists of a grid, a controller, a disk drive, and a 1k storage disk. The controller is the central thing to the whole system, right? This system needs a controller. It is what stores the power as well as basically links everything together. In Vault Hunters, this is the craft. You need chromatic steel as well as these construction cores, advanced processors, destruction cores, and improved processors. And these are decently cheap crafts. They all start with this raw basic processor and you know this is the advanced processor this is the improved processor and then construction cores and destruction cores you can see are improved processors in vault diamonds as well as improved processors in vault essence refined storage definitely has a lot of like big crafting tree or like medium-sized crafting tree so make sure to use jei you're going to need a grid if you want to view your items which does cost a pog but otherwise it's a pretty decently cheap craft and then you are going to need a disc drive which does require some black chromatic steel and another machine casing but it's very important of course you're also going to need some storage disc here is a 1k storage disc which is a storage housing crafted like so as well as a 1k storage part which is crafted like so. Slap them all together and you'll have a refined storage system. Inside the disk drive is where you want to put your 1k storage disk and you'll see that it means we now have a thousand items that we can put in this. Uh, any item takes up one slot, so a minecart, a diamond, and an ender pearl all take up exactly the same space. It doesn't use physical storage like simple storage network, it uses digital storage, so each item is one item. You can fill up your disk drive as much as you want, and there are also higher tiers of storage disks. The recipes for the storage housings remain the same, so I'm just going to show off um, the recipes for the storage parts. There's a 1k, a 4k, a 16k, and a 64k, the 1k being the cheapest. For the 4k, you'll need three 1ks, and for the 16k, you'll need three 4ks, and continuing the pattern, for the 64k, you only need three 16ks in Deneco Pog, so the 64k is pretty expensive. Do note that you do need to give power to your refined storage controller. Just here, I'm using a creative controller for the purposes of this video, but the controller is what accepts FE, so you will need access to an FE producing mod for this. Otherwise, here is your most basic refined storage system. You can dump items in, you'll see it'll start to fill up. If you want to know how much FE you're taking, you can open up your controller and hover over this blue bar. It'll tell you how much FE per tick. You can even hover over the individual items that are connected to it, and it'll tell you how much FE per tick each one of them is taking. This can also be set up in any arrangement. As long as the blocks are touching the controller, they're considered a part of the network. Also, I'll use that to show off. I broke the disk drive, and it dropped the storage disk, and you can see it still has all the items. So any storage disk will hold permanently all the items inside of it and you can just kind of run around with it. But you can see I can place the grid here and the disk drive here and put the disk in and it still works even though the disk drive isn't directly touching the controller. You can also extend your network with these cables, pretty cheap craft, they just require this thing called quartz enriched iron which is just some Laramar, chromatic iron, and nether quartz. And these will connect to either your controller or any block touching your controller and you can see we can put more items in. You can also have as many grids and disk drives as you want, but only one controller. And that is literally the basics of refined storage. There's more you can do with it, so stick around to see, but if all you needed was an absolutely basic setup, then congratulations, you're pretty much at the end of that. Getting more into the weeds here, let's talk about importers, exporters, external storages, and interfaces. An importer is a pretty cheap craft that's just a destruction core and an improved processor, as well as a cable and the exporter is a construction core and an improved processor with a cable, so they're mirrored crafts. They both very much do what you expect they ought to. An importer will attach to a chest and it will import items into the system. So say I've got my diamonds, I can import the diamonds into the system. You'll see it will fill up and update in real time, we can even watch that go up. 
Let's say I only want the importer to work when I want it to, so I can set it to only work while accepting a redstone signal. So you can see at the moment it's not importing our diamonds, but if I flick a lever next to it, it begins to. You can also set it to work only in the absence of a redstone signal, or of course work at all times. You can also put filters on your importer using these slots right here. Say some dirt accidentally fell into your diamond farm, you can set it to blacklist dirt on the importer. So if I put dirt in, nothing happens, but the diamonds will be sucked out. The exact mode button is NBT sensitivity. So let's say you only want to take in diamond swords from your importer. With exact mode on, it will only take in full diamond swords. You can see I can put in this diamond sword, but it's been damaged. However, if I were to turn exact mode off, it will take broken diamond swords as well as full diamond swords, regardless of how broken they are. So if you want to import something based on NBT, then you should turn exact mode off. An exporter works pretty much in the same way. If you do need to filter it, right, there's no blacklist or whitelist. You just have to put in what you want to export. We'll say I want to move my diamonds and you'll see the diamonds will immediately start coming out of our system. Once again, you can turn exact mode on or off. You can turn redstone signal on, off, or ignore. An interface is the combination of an importer as well as an exporter, and it does both of their jobs. You place it down and it's this big old block. You can see you can define what the interface imports and what the interface exports. So we can say the interface should export diamonds. And by the way, you can actually drag filters from JEI, which is very cool. We'll say it exports diamonds and we will have it import turtle eggs. Right, and do make sure that this thing is connected to some pipe or hopper as it does not automatically um, move it into inventory. So you can see if I put a hopper on the bottom of it, it'll start sucking out our diamonds. And I believe if we insert turtle eggs into it, it will suck it out, which you can do uh, once again with the hopper. So this is a hopper functionality item. Um, it'll suck it right on into the system. Very, very useful for uh, some niche situations, or if you just want to use hoppers with your refined storage. To show off the external storage, which is a destruction core, construction core, improved processor, two chests, some quartz enriched iron, as well as that interface we just showed off, I set up a little scenario here. We only have a 1k storage disk in our system, but we have a drawer with 192 pink dye, because the color pink is amazing. Filling 192 slots with just pink dye seems a little silly. So we'd want to keep this in our drawer, but of course we'd rather access it through our grid. And that is what the external storage can do. By placing it onto an item and connecting it to the system, the refined storage system will now view the contents of that drawer as a part of itself. And you'll see we can view the pink dye here, but it does not take up any space in our disk. If you're using external storages, you're probably going to want to go into your disk drive and change its priority. Right now it's priority zero, but because it's so close to the network, it's always going to be chosen first. So you can make it priority negative 50 and set that. And first, when you input items into the system or anything inputs items to the system, it's now going to start checking this because its priority is zero, which is higher than the disk drives. So if I take out our pink die, you'll see there's nothing in the drawer. But if I put it back in, it goes back into the pink drawer, which we can check because the disk is not full. Any other items will go into the disk drive, though, because they fail to go anywhere else. Alternatively, you can raise the priority on your external storage. The external storage has an additional setting, the insert and extract setting. Insert and extract means you can put items in and take items out. Insert only means you won't be able to view the items inside of the grid but they will go into the drawer or whatever it's connected to first. And then extract only means you cannot put items in, but you can take items out. So you can see I could take out a stack of pink dye. When I put it back into the system, it goes into the disk. External storages will work on regular chests, colossal chests as long as they're connected to the core or interface. They'll even connect to a drawer controller that will connect to any of the drawers that's connected to, which is a super useful bulk storage option. You can even connect it to other networks via their exchange blocks. Here's a simple storage network that has 64 andersite in it. And you can see 64 andersite, I take it out of here, takes it out of the simple storage network, I put it back in, it puts it back into the simple storage network. So you can even link other storage networks too. This works with uh, Play Energistics as well. Exporters and importers can also be upgraded to go a lot faster. 
All upgrades require this upgrade base, which is decently cheap, just requiring an improved processor. And the two upgrades you can put in importers and exporters are speed upgrades, which increase the speed at which items are exported or imported, and stack upgrades. One of these will make it so that it pulls or pushes an entire stack of items. Each stack upgrade is another stack of items that will pull or push at one time. The use cases of importers, exporters, interfaces, and external storages are almost infinite. A lot of them are like if you have farms or factories or other mods that produce a lot of items, you can just import them right into the system. There's even a little more functionality that you can squeeze out of these blocks, and that is through this guy, a detector. Detectors are actually a pretty cheap craft, and they're so useful for maintaining farms. All they do is they take in a number, we'll say 700, as well as an item, we'll say diamonds. And this right here, the mode is the most important thing. This will emit a redstone signal when there are exactly 700 diamonds in your system. Now it will emit a redstone signal when there are more than 700 diamonds in your system. Now it will export uh, or give a redstone signal when there are less than 700 diamonds. Combine that with the ability to turn off and on exporters and importers with redstone signals and you can control farms. Here I'm going to show off a really simple use case of exporters, importers, and detectors. This is an auto smelting system. It comprises of two exporters and an importer. The exporter on top is going to export raw iron, raw copper, and raw gold to make it super easy after you come back from the mines. I've also filled it up with speed upgrades. We also have another exporter that I will eventually link to coal. Now, the reason I haven't done it yet is because I want to show off that there is a detector connected to it that will only emit a redstone signal when there's more than 128 coal in the system, because, you know, we don't ever want to run out of coal, especially because the vaulter might need it. I'm going to make sure to have ignore redstone signal change to only work with redstone signal, and you'll see, once I drag coal in, it will begin exporting our coal super quick. And, check that out, the light has turned off because there is now 128 coal. It requires 129, so even if I were to take coal out of the furnace, it will not export more until I put it back in, at which point it will stop exporting at 128. At the bottom, of course, we have an importer that will pull anything out of it. Do note that the rules of a furnace with hoppers still apply, so coal needs to be inputted from the side. The smelted item needs to be inputted from the top, and items need to be dragged out of the bottom. But you can see, if I am to drop our raw iron, copper, and gold in because it's a netherite furnace, it almost immediately gets smelted down. So here is one use case of importers, exporters, detectors, and upgrades. Awesome. So far, we know how to import, export, use external storages, a little bit more advanced functionality, some passive auto crafting, but there's even more that the system can do it can store liquids. And storing liquids is just as easy as storing items. You just need storage parts, which are super cheap. This is a 64K fluid storage part, which is 64 millibuckets, which is 64 buckets of an item. Almost free to upgrade it to a 256, then a 1024, all the way to a 4096K storage. And it's so extremely cheap. The only other thing you need is a fluid grid, and that is just a grid, an advanced processor, and a bucket. Once you put your fluid part in a storage housing, all you have to do is slot it right in, and you can see it will display you having 65,000 slots, but it is only uh, fluid and items, so do keep note of that. By placing a fluid grid on our system, we now have a way to view our fluids. Fluids can be imported, exported, and used in external storages, and you could also have a bucket and shift-click it into a fluid grid, and there you go. 1,000 millibuckets of water show up on your system, and you can see that it also counts right here. It has 1,000 out of 64,000 millibuckets of liquid. And guess what? Importers, exporters, and external storage work with it. I'll put an external storage on this fluid tank, an exporter on this fluid tank, and an importer on this fluid tank. All of these won't work yet, because you need to click on this button that I didn't go over, changing the type to fluids. You want it to be fluids and fluids and fluids. We'll fill up this guy with some lava, and then connect the external storage to our system with cables, like so. And you can see in the fluid grid, we now have 10 buckets of lava. 
I can add even more to it and it fills right up. If we wanted to, we can then export said lava into this guy. And you can see it is now pulling out of this fluid into this fluid. You can see the middle buckets of lava go down. It's very slow at the moment, but you can of course augment it with as many speed upgrades as you'd like. And of course, an importer works as well. We can fill this guy up with honey and you'll see it sucks up honey into the system. Super cool. And the last thing is you can shift click fluids with a bucket in your inventory to fill the bucket with that fluid. You guys are doing great sticking this far because there's so much more that this can do. In fact, this is pretty small. However, what if I have a base all the way behind this tree? It'd be pretty annoying to have to run all the cables to get from here to here. So why don't we go a little wireless? To go wireless, you're going to need a network receiver, a network transmitter, and a network card. And it's actually really easy. You're going to place the transmitter connected somewhere to your main network, and your receiver should go all the way wherever you want it to. Right click the receiver with your network card, head back over to the transmitter, and shift click it in. And you'll see that your receiver lights up blue, and that's that. Your network has just been extended. If I place a grid over here, I can access all the same items. You'll see uh, it is reflected on our system over here. And I could even insert items from this receiver. Bam. This receiver works with external storages, importers, exporters, fluid grids, everything. You have literally, for such a low cost, just moved your system all the way over here. In fact, you can move it pretty much an infinite number of blocks, but just know that for this to function, the chunk that your main network is in, as well as the extended network is in, do need to be loaded. This will not work in unloaded chunks, but it is probably the simplest form of extending a network. Now, extending your network to another place in the world is pretty cool, but what about extending it to your inventory? Well, look no further than a wireless transmitter, which this is a block of ender pearls, by the way, and the wireless grid. It does cost a grid and a wireless transmitter, as well as a block of quartz enriched, or two blocks of quartz enriched iron. But with this, you can literally open this inventory from your inventory. Do note that a wireless grid does need to be powered with FE. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using a creative wireless grid, which does not need FE. Just like everything in this lovely system, you can place your wireless transmitter anywhere where it is considered connected to your network. Then you shift right click your wireless grid onto the controller. There you go. You can take items out. You can put items in. However, the range is pretty small. I believe it's 16 blocks initially. There we go. So if you have a larger base, this is not going to work for you unless you use a range upgrade, of course, which is a really cheap upgrade. And the range upgrades uh, allow you to uh, make it bigger. So at the moment, it's 16 blocks, but it can go all the way up to 48 blocks away. You can go all the way over here. Oh, not all the way over here. Sorry. All the way over here and still access your system, which is a huge range. And if that wasn't cool enough, you could also make wireless fluid grids in case that's something you need. And of course, this works with extended networks too. So you can extend an extension of your network by extending your network. Ah, refined storage is so fun. So in review, we have basic storage, fluid storage, importing, exporting, and external storages, as well as the ability to access your inventory from your inventory and extend it all the way across the world, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of blocks. So of course, it's got auto crafting. For auto crafting, you're going to make sure you want to have a lot of patterns. You need one pattern per each item you want to auto craft. You're going to want a pattern grid, which is going to make uh, it possible for you to make the patterns. And yes, this does require an Omega Pog, so it's pretty expensive, but extremely worth it. You're going to need a crafting monitor, which is sort of the CPU of crafting and it's just the patterns and machine casings, a little bit of glass and improved processors. And then you need a crafter, which a little expensive, but one crafter can craft a ton of different items. Once again, you're free to connect these however you would like to your system. Nice and simple. And let's start with some simple crafting and get more advanced as we go, because this is an extremely smart system and it can craft pretty much anything. So auto crafting starts with the pattern grid. And let's say I want to be able to auto craft crafting tables. Well, you just need to put in the crafting recipe 
as well as the crafting table. And for a crafting table, I would turn off exact because I believe that means you can actually use any type of planks. You can then create it into a pattern and you can see this is a one-time uh, crafting table. If you hold shift, it'll tell you the input as well as the output. You then want to head on into your little crafter and click the pattern in and it'll even display it as a crafting table. Your crafting monitor you don't actually really interact with, but you can go into your grid and see that it now says crafting table. If you don't want to see that, you can change the display to no craftables. If you only want to see craftables, you can change the display to only craftables. We can then click on crafting table and tell how many crafting tables we want. We'll order five crafting tables. It will then give us a crafting preview, which will tell us how many crafting tables it will make and how many items it needs. Pressing start and you'll see, there we go. You can also pull crafting recipes right out of JEI. So let's say fence, but we don't want to bother with dragging all the items in, or we may not even have the items in our grid. We can still make patterns for fences. Now fences are a little interesting because you know they, they make three fences at a time. So you'll see, even if I order four, it'll just make six, which is the closest number that I can craft. And there we go. Say I want to make more fences, right? But I don't have any sticks in the inventory. If I order uh, one, it will say it is missing two sticks. But this is a very smart system. If we make the pattern of sticks, right, and turn that into a pattern and give it to the crafter, the system will be intelligent enough to know when I want, let's say, six fences, it will say to craft oak fence as well as to craft sticks. So it can even do nested crafting. This is extremely powerful, even in refined storage. Could you imagine being able to auto craft all those annoying processors? Lickety split. Because refined storage is so cool, you can also auto craft with machines. So here we're going to use a mechanism crusher. What we're going to do is we're going to check this processing button. Normally you'll see just a 3x3 crafting grid, but here we're going to check a processing button. And for this, let's make some netherite dust, which requires a netherite ingot as an input, and we'll take netherite dust as an output. You're going to put your pattern on in here and move that into your crafter. Now note that the crafter needs to be facing into the item or rather the machine that you're using. You'll also want to make sure you have an importer connected to the machine so the item can actually get back into the system and ensure that all of your inputs and outputs are configured. So we want to make sure that we can input from the back and output on the right. And now, as long as we have the netherite, we can order a netherite dust to be crafted. It'll say to craft a netherite dust, and available is netherite. And immediately, bam, our crusher launches into action, and the system will wait for the netherite dust to be inputted inside of it. There we go. And you can see in our crafting monitor, there is no more crafts available. And of course, we have our netherite dust. You can also auto craft with fluids and items. Let's say we want to make ice with a blast chiller. Well, that requires some water. Initially, you can see I cannot drag the water in, but if I check fluids, it'll accept water as an input. One bucket of water to one ice block. And we're going to have our crafter connected to the blast chiller, which takes in the liquid and puts out an item. We can then place our pattern into the crafter and of course make sure your outputs and inputs are configured properly. You can then order a piece of ice to be crafted where it will fill it with some water that will begin chilling it right on into ice and place it inside of the system and congratulations you've just auto crafted. Admittedly I doubt I need to explain how absolutely useful auto crafting is especially when it comes down to big crafting trees. I mean with thermal expansion brewers and stuff, you can auto craft potions from just water, nether wart, golden apples, and redstone. Like you don't need, or uh, glowstone. You don't need to put a lot of work in. And of course, the more upgrades you give to that, uh, the better it'll be. And of course, refined storage can do even more. So here are just some tips and tricks and fun use cases. If you hold down shift and scroll wheel, while uh, over an item, you'll see you can pull out one item at a time. Holding down shift also locks the item in place, so the rest of the GOI doesn't update until I let go of shift. You can also right-click to pull out half a stack, or half the stack of items, uh, whichever is most appropriate. 
This is a filter which can be used to have many more filter slots inside of the filters of importers, exporters, external storages, anything that requires filters. You can mod filter, you can check for NBT, you can filter for fluids, you can change it from a whitelist to a blacklist, you can even give the filter an icon and a name because they can also be used to create tabs. Here I have a filter called Valuables with a diamond as its icon and diamonds, iron, and gold inside of it. You can see I have diamonds, iron, and gold in my system, but if I put the filter in one of these filter slots, there is now a tab where I can hide everything but my diamonds, iron, and gold. I can click it again to go back to my main view, and of course click it again to go back. You can have up to four filters, however, you can put filters inside of filters to have more than four tabs. A grid can be upgraded through the use of a echo pog into a crafting grid, giving you a crafting table inside of your grid for easy peasy use. Not only can you have a wireless fluid grid, regular grid, but you can also have a wireless crafting monitor to view uh, your crafts, as well as a wireless crafting grid to have a crafting table within your wireless system. Your refined storage network can be extra dimensional through the use of simple networking. It doesn't require any extra steps, just in the same exact way. Oh, seems like I was testing this out already. Cables can be covered with covers. There are hollow covers to have cables coming out of, as well as regular covers to just fill in one face of the block. You can craft any block into a cover by placing it in the center of your crafting table and putting an iron nugget on the other side. Uh, I can't craft this because I don't have it unlocked, but just imagine it working. And it's a really simple way to cover up any cables, importers, or exporters. You can create a storage monitor and while shift right clicking, put an item in it as a filter to display a big old visual of how many items you have in your system. This is not a drawer, so punching it will just break it. And most importantly, almost every glowing block in refined storage can be dyed some color. Well, that is refined storage from the beginning to the end. I'm sure there's stuff that I missed, but this should take you through like 99.9% .9 of all use cases should be covered by this. I really appreciate you watching, and if you enjoyed, why don't you subscribe for more of this guides and Let's Play content if you're into that. And uh, yeah, I hope this video helps. I hope refined storage is more illuminated for you. Any questions you have, put them in the comments below. I'll see you in the next guide.